Hi guys and welcome back to today's middle game video and the last time we talked about positional planning so today we're going to go over weakness planning which is of course making a plan on creating a weakness so the weakness that you're trying to create could be a weak square or weak pawns now as you probably know weak pawns are isolated pawns doubled pawns backward pawns tripled pawns um, I think you get the point and weak squares are weak squares <laughs> I mean yeah we talked about weak squares in one of our previous videos make sure to check it out but today of course we're going to have a different example and in fact a very instructive one okay so let's stop wasting words and just get into our first example which is going to be about creating a weak square now in this position you can see that white has a bishop pair also more space and white's king is probably more safe than black's king try to think about this position and come up with a killer move here okay so the move that white played here was b4 this is just a fantastic move trying to open uh, you know some lines here to the king to uh, just put the rooks here and also this is not the only thing that white wants to do the idea is that, for example, if black plays something like c4 or j takes the pawn, we can see this d4 square, this beautiful square for the knight. You can imagine knight going here and here, and this is just a dream square for the knight. From here it can jump, for example, here to e6 or here to c6, and this is just beautiful. So with this move um, b4, we provoked black to, you know, do something and when he does something we can see we get these weak squares here we get our knight to jump here to this fine outpost and this is just very nice but okay black didn't play c4 here but he played h4 attacking the queen but okay white just moved the queen and now black took on b4 attacking the knight and now white could play knight to e2 a knight here but he rather decided to go to b1 and the point is that he wants to go to d2, b3 and from there it could also jump to this um, a5 square and then to this c6 square. So that's a very nice plan. White here knew that he's going to use the weak squares and that they're very important so that's why he created them. And okay, black here played knight to e5 attacking the queen. You can see that this is a pretty good square for the knight. But after queen to e2, this knight is actually not that important in this position. Because white has bigger plans on just moving the rook here to this file, attacking the king. And, you know, like we said, maneuvering the knight to a very useful square. So, okay, uh, black played knight to e8, trying to come back to the queen side to help black's king in the defense. So now white played uh, bishop to b6, attacking the rook. Rook has to move to d7, that's the only square. And we can see knight to d2, starting to remaneuver this knight to a weak square. And now black wants to open things up here on the king side, try to, you know, attack the white king or just get some activity going with f5. But white finds a very good move in this position, which is f4. Attacking the knight, the knight has to move back, and now knight to b3. We can see that black finally gets to develop his bishop to g7. He really has a very good diagonal here, but this is not a problem for white. He plays a move e5. That's a beautiful move, and white didn't just sacrifice a pawn here, but the point is that when black takes, he checks uh, black's king. Okay, he blocked the check with a knight, and now knight to c5. White just ignores this pawn here on e5, since it's not very important, and if he recaptured this pawn, then okay, black's pieces would get kinda more active, you know, doesn't really matter with which piece uh, black takes. This is not a very good idea for white in this position, so that's why he just played knight to c5, attacking the rook. And black just took another pawn here on f4. And now, do you want to exchange the queens or not? Of course not, you don't want to exchange pieces. 
because you're attacking Black's King, right? You want to have your Queen on the board because this is your, this is a lot of times uh, a very good attacking piece, like you probably know, right? So that's why White played Queen to F2, avoiding the Queen trade. Now Black just took on D5 with his Rook, basically sacrificing an exchange. But White didn't take it, he didn't want to give any chances to black, so he just took on a6, which is uh, probably the best move here. You can see that there's a pin on a king, and there are like three pieces attacking uh, this knight here, right? So this knight is just probably going to fall. And the only thing black can do here is to block this file, and he played bishop to c3, but now still White took the knight because it's defended only with a king and a queen and now white, black is of course not going to take this knight and black attacked the queen with rook to d7 and now pause the video and try to guess what can you do here with white okay so the right move is to take the rook you take the rook it works tactically because you can see that when black recaptures the queen there are some discovers possible here with the knight and you play knight to d5 check, he has to, you know, take your rook, and you take the queen, of course. And now if you count the pieces, you are piece up, and this is just a uh, winning position. So why is this game so instructive? It's because white finds a way to just sacrifice his b-pawn in order to get his knight to a weak square. Because if white didn't play this move b4, then he wouldn't be able to, you know, come to a weak square because this square would be defended by the pawn here and he had to provoke it. So keep this in mind, when creating a weak square, you can a lot of times also sacrifice a pawn just in order to get your piece to a very useful square to a weak square. Okay, so let's look at our uh, next example here that we have today. And this one is about creating weak pawns. And this is a really good example because we've already looked at minority attack and here we can see this minority attack in action. We can see that this is the Carlsbad pawn structure like we talked about and white is doing his minority attack just to create some weak pawns here. He wants to capture uh, here on c6 to give him uh, give black a backwards pawn or if black recaptures then he would have an isolated pawn. So that's White's plan here, um, go check out the video on minority attack if you didn't yet. So okay, Black here plays b6 and his idea was that if, if White plays uh, his minority attack with b5, he would play c5. And he would be pretty fine because if White takes now, Black just recaptures and his pawns aren't that weak here, so this was Black's idea. But of course, uh, white didn't play b5, first he played knight to c1. This is a pretty good move, getting a knight to this uh, e2 square. From where it supports this knight, it's also threatening to jump on f4. And I mean, this is a pretty good square for a knight, so that's why he played it. And now we can see bishop to h6, knight to e2, and knight to h5. And now, if we can see this idea with minority attack, it works. He plays b5, and now c5, of course, doesn't work, because if white takes the pawn, you can see that whatever um, black does, if he recaptures, he loses a pawn, and he doesn't want that, obviously. So this is not working, c5 is not working here. So that's why he played queen to d7, but still, White created a weak pawn with this minority attack. He just took the pawn and we can see here an isolated pawn. It has no pawns here to protect it. So this is a weak pawn here and White is really going to try to attack it. So first of all he played queen to b5. We can see rook e to c8. Putting pressure on this file he's hoping that this uh, pin here uh, is going to save him. But it actually didn't, as we're going to see. White played rook to c1. We can see rook to c7. And now the next move is just crushing. White played g4. And the point is that black can't move here 
because of this move, tactical move, can you see it? 3, 2, 1, go. Knight to d5. And he can't take here, obviously, because of a check. And you can see that uh, this is going to be over. So, and if he takes, of course, then you take the rook. And this is just over again. So he can't move the knight to this f6 square, but he played a6, which doesn't save anything. White just takes the pawn, and it's the same thing. So that's how the game ended. That's just over here. He resigned because of this, of course. Um, black just loses the queen. So the point in this game was this minority attack creating a weak pawn. So like I said, there are two types of weakness planning, planning to create a weak square and planning to create weak pawns. So I hope you guys enjoyed that video, if you did, please share it and I'll see you in the next video.